What's going on, creatives? Let's talk about brand identity. A few years ago, I created the Amali Wine brand using traditional tools like Illustrator, Photoshop, and Envato Elements. What I wanted to know was how much of this process can I turn over to AI? For comparison, here are some of the assets created when using Illustrator, Photoshop, and Envato Elements, basically the traditional tools. I created the wine labels, I created a flyer, and I created posters. I also created cards for each individual wine. And in the process, I would say that this entire project took about a weekend's, it was about a weekend's worth of work. So what I need to know was, how can I do this with AI? And here is the tech stack that, that really worked for me. First, generating the prompts and formatting the JSON files. All of that was done in Claude, it can be done in ChatGPT. Either one works perfectly fine. You can do that and you can use that tool for those. Big grab. Generating the labels, I'm using, I use Midjourney and I'll explain why I use Midjourney. I'll show you the differences of what Flux did with the labels and what Midjourney did with the labels. But Midjourney turns out was a better tool for this particular project. Oh. Generating the images, I used Flux. And then the mock-up, I used Photoshop. And again, there were some things that we can use AI to do mock-ups, but the quality is different, at least from my aspect, it was different using the AI tool for mock-up versus just sticking with Photoshop. So generating the prompts. As always, we need a framework. When we're designing any type of project, we need the consistency. We need to come up with a framework. And this is the framework work I came up with for generating the labels. Now, as you can see, the only thing I'm changing here is the background colors and the accent colors. And I'm just kind of matching those with the, with the wine. So light colors for white wines, dark colors for the red wines. It is one of those cases where something like this, I think the more detailed you are, the better you are, the better the results. Here are a few of the designs I got from the from Mid Journey. I did really like what Mid Journey gave me versus what I was able to do on my own. And if we take a look at all of the Mid Journey images, all right, so if we take a look and see what's, what's, what Midjourney created, and you can see there, here are the prompt. Here are some of the images that we got. And it was just a matter of Midjourney produces four images. So for every label, we would get four images to choose from. Now, in the real world, I would probably generate three per wine. So for Cabernet, I would probably generate this, run this prompt three times to get a total of 12 different images and then choose from that 12. But in this case, I just a simple project. We just went with a simple one time and then moved on. When it came, when it comes to when it comes to logos, I think you can be inspired by Midjourney. And maybe Ideogram and some other tools are better with creating logos. But in this case, I only stuck with Midjourney. And I do believe this image and this image are as close to the original logo that I had that if I were to start here, that I would at least be inspired by this. And then I would just have to take this, find the font that's really close to it, uh, create vectors out of this and see if we can create a logo in Illustrator. Generating the images. So I use Flux AI, the API to, to generate the images. And I did not do anything different from the resort project that we did. Description, camera angle, shot specs, details, color palette. The difference here is that with the resort, we wanted the details and the color palette to remain the same throughout all of the images. 
Whereas in this case, we need the details and the color palette to more match the wine. So a Cabernet Sauvignon, we went with rich, dark colors. A Syrah, again, rich, dark colors versus the white wine where I went with lighter motifs, lighter, lighter images. And you can see that in the differences here. So these light images, Chardonnay, Riesling, and I believe Sauvignon Blanc, and the darker images, Cabernet Syrah, I believe maybe a Merlot or something like that. But you can see that the differences here were really based on the wine, trying to find the image that matched the wine. Now, here's a little detail that we have to get into because this is a Chardonnay, but there is no white wine. There's a white wine bottle, but there are no glasses of white wine. And so when you're doing something like this, where we are looking for this type of detail, this is where I would go back into that prompt and change those details. So for example, this is a Syrah, but if you notice, there are white wine glasses. There are glasses with white wine here. So that's something that I would go in and I would change to make sure that I get red wine in all of these glasses. So let's take a look at just the JSON files. Again, we've had where we start with, so this is kind of how, this is what mid journey. So if we take a look at this and we talk about getting your prompts into JSON format, this is what I got from ChatGPT. So for ChatGPT, it gave me this, and then I had to tell it to put it in the JSON format. So I ended up with this. And so here are my scenes. The difference is, is that what I said before with the details, I would have gone in here and said, let me get red wine red wine, specifically mentioned white wine. So that's the only differences that I would do is come back and, and run this. So I make sure that I get the wines that I want. But overall, I was happy with this, with these images. The labels, let's talk about the labels, because I said I use mid journey for the labels. I could have used flux for the labels. The problem is, is that this is what flux gave me. And you can see the problem here. Okay. Not the same quality as mid journey and, but it's the same prompt. They're the exact same prompt, but a big difference between what mid journey produced and what flux produced. And so that is the reason why I went, I went to mid journey. And this is one of those things about AI is that you do have to kind of find the tool that produces the right output for you. All right, so let's talk about Photoshop. Now, this is not a Photoshop video, so I'm only going to kind of show you the mock-up that I did. And the reason I use this, the reason I use Photoshop versus using Recraft or something like that is simply because of the quality. With the label, is simply as come in, put the label in, put in your text and everything, save it, and there's your mock-up. A lot of time was finding assets, to be perfectly honest with you. A lot of time was, is, was finding the assets to create the labels. Whereas here, there was no time in searching. It was simply spend 15 to 20 minutes, get the framework together, let AI produce a bunch of different images, and then it's tweaking and editing. Because I had the because I had the mock-up already, that was no problem. And so we're talking about, you know, a weekend to maybe a, just a few hours. It took me just a couple of hours to do this. And I believe that's where the difference is. And if this were a real project, we are talking about creating a hundred labels to get to the right labels. Imagine how much time it takes for you, someone to illustrate 100 labels 
versus going to mid journey and producing a bunch of labels and picking the best ones. So you guys can download all of this. I can't share the mock-up, like this is from Envato Elements, so can't share the mock-up, but it's one of those things that, you know, you go to Envato Elements, free picks, a lot of places to get your downloads for mock-ups. All right, that's it. You guys keep creating.